Hello everyone and welcome. As you know, my name is Tan Mei Bakshi. I'm from Toronto, Canada. And just before I begin today, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the entire team at TEDx Chandigarh for actually inviting me to this event and also specifically Pritika and Simmerpreet Singh for actually uh, arranging all of this and bringing me to this event. Uh, in fact, they had actually regionally invited me to the main event uh, of TEDx Chandigarh, but unfortunately I wasn't able to be there. Uh, but then again, I am very glad and excited to be a part of the pre-event. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to the entire Manav Mongol Smart School uh, for actually you know, hosting this event uh, and allowing me to be a part. To begin today, I'd like to tell you all a little bit about my background and what I like to do. I am an AI developer and neural network architect, as well as an algorithmist at Darwin Ecosystem. I'm also a coach on the computational thinking topic at the 4th Industrial Revolution Organization, as well as a visiting faculty member and honorary advisor at the Grad Valley Data Science Institute in Coimbatore, India. I'm also an honorary IBM Cloud Advisor, an IBM Champion for Cloud, and the host of an IBM Facebook Live series called Watson Made Simple with Tan May. I also have a goal to reach out to at least 100,000 aspiring coders to help them innovate along their journey of coding. And in fact, I'm really glad to say that I'm already around 5,500 people there. I'm also the author of a book called Hello Swift, as well as a YouTuber at the Tanmay Teaches YouTube channel. And I'm currently working on writing another book on IBM Watson, which will give you a simple beginning to the deep learning as a service APIs that IBM Watson provides. So as you can tell by what I like to do, I am really, really passionate about the powerful back end that goes behind services like IBM's Watson, which is without a doubt deep learning technology. In fact, as I speak, deep learning is impacting hundreds of thousands of people's lives across the globe and it's impacting hundreds of fields and industries. However, out of all of the industries that deep learning is currently working on disrupting, there's one that I believe it's making the most impact in. And that is the field of healthcare. And so today, I'd like to share with you a project of mine in the field of healthcare. More specifically, a project in the field of mental health. In fact, a project that I was talking about earlier this month at TED in San Francisco. The end goal of this project is to reduce teen suicide. And we're doing this by actually diagnosing depression in the youth early via deep learning technologies. In fact, this project is actually a collaboration effort between me and two of my mentors, Prashant Main from New Zealand and James Archieri from the US. Now, the reason I'm working on this project is because of some really fascinating statistics that I found. Did you know that in Australia alone, the 1-800-KIDS helplines that actually help kids when they have depressing thoughts, over 40% of the calls coming into these hotlines annually aren't even being answered. And that's simply due to the lack of human staff. Imagine how many people don't get to call these helplines just because the helplines can't actually afford to pay more human staff. And then, even more surprisingly, in the US alone, over 80% of the teens that commit suicide, that's four in five of them, actually give off clear warning signs or patterns, if you will, before it actually happens. Now what this means is that before they actually commit suicide, patterns are given. And artificial intelligence is an expert at detecting patterns, which is why I decided to actually make a system that can analyze a ton of this teenager's data and try and create an early warning system for the youth to see if they're depressed at an early stage so we can help treat it at an early stage as well. Now, as you can tell, 
This is basically artificial intelligence powered data understanding. We're understanding a ton of not only their public, but also their private data. We're not just looking at, say, their Facebook data, where they may not want to show that they're depressed. We're looking at all kinds of data, their SMS data, their GPS. Have they been to work? Have they been to school? We're taking a look at all of this data. But I'm not just stopping at data understanding. I'm expanding this to much, much more than just that. I'm taking this from machine learning based data understanding and the early warning system to also what happens after they've been diagnosed. What happens when we know this person has depression? And that's where the therapy comes in. I'm also creating machine learning based e-therapy. But before I can tell you about my machine learning based therapy, let's talk a little bit about therapy itself. Now we all know that this type of mental health therapy is basically a conversation. It is a conversation between a therapist and the patient. But there are a few distinct traits of this conversation that computers just don't like. And that is that this is a very natural conversation. There is absolutely no predetermined dialogue structure. It is completely free flowing. The only, the, the only goal that the therapist has is to find out what type, how severe, or whether or not this patient has depression. And so whenever I talk about this, I always get quite a few different ideas. And so people tell me that, hey, why don't you use a chatbot? That is absolutely perfect for this use case. And well, the AIification of e-therapy would not let me use a chatbot. Why? It's because chatbots already have a predetermined dialogue structure. Now, I'm sure that everyone here uses chatbots on a daily basis. If anything, you have already used a chatbot today, most probably. And because of that, you feel like you know how exactly chatbots work. They feel so natural to us humans, like for example, Siri. Let's just say you want to check the weather. You want to know what to wear outside. So you say, hey Siri, should I wear a jacket today? And Siri tells you, no, you don't need to wear a jacket because it's this temperature outside. But the thing is, Siri was told that if someone asks you if they need to wear a jacket, you should reply with this information. What it did though, is it executed that action through the power of AI. It understood what I was talking about through AI and then formulated and spoke its response back to me with artificial intelligence. But what Google recently did is they took that and they made the next level of chatbots. They made chatbots that are completely unstructured and have absolutely no predetermined dialogue structure to them at all. And they can still understand the context of conversations. For example, this conversation here. Now this might seem like a pretty funny example of a conversation between a machine and a human. But what this actually shows you is when Google took a corpus of movie dialogues that's right, they just took movie dialogues, people speaking to each other in movies, and fed it into a machine learning algorithm, a sequence to sequence LSTM. And they said, learn from these machine, learn from these movie dialogues. And what happened next is the person, the human, actually asked the computer new questions. And the machine was able to give sensical replies. For example, when the, uh, when the human asked, what do you think about Bill Gates? The machine replies, he's a good man. It understands the context of Bill Gates and that he is a person, even though that was never programmed in. And it even gets as complex as, what do you think about England during the reign of Elizabeth? And it understood that we were talking about a time and a place and said it was a great place. Imagine, with a much more limited scope, limited vocabulary, and limited goal, this machine learning algorithm that I'm developing will be able to do so much and impact hundreds of thousands of people every single day. But really, my goal and my message for you today is that artificial intelligence isn't just the future, it's the present as well. And while you may not realize it, artificial intelligence is playing a huge role in your life today. 
But what I will tell you is that it's going to be growing and expanding exponentially in the future. Just as a small example, what would doctors do in the past? Well, they diagnose their patient's disease if and when the symptoms appear. Because the thing is, when we didn't know anything about this sort of technology and actually diagnosing patients, we didn't know how to diagnose them before all of these symptoms actually appear. But what happens in the present? Well, let's take the example of cancer. Using artificial intelligence, see, that's in the present, we're able to diagnose cancer at a very early stage. And therefore, that makes it so much more likely that you will survive that treatment. But what's going to happen in the future? If in the present, artificial intelligence is already allowing us to diagnose cancer at such an early stage, imagine in the future, if we don't even need to wait for the cancer to develop. What if we could actually diagnose and also treat diseases before your body even knows that the disease is there? Just as a good example, there is a world famous cyclist that was, you know, once running uh, a cycling, you know, race, uh, I believe, in France. And what Watson did is, uh, I mean, before he went cycling, uh, he was, you know, partnering with IBM, uh, and he decided to take a little pill that would actually track what's happening inside of his body as he's cycling. And what happened is, as he was going, Watson was tracking his every move. And what Watson did, is it reported in the middle of a race that you are starting to develop a little bit of bacteria in your body. And this is something that will make you sick in the future. You should take this anti, uh, antibacterial medicine right now. And what happened is before his body's immune system even knew that bacteria was there, IBM Watson knew it. And he was prevented from that illness and ended up winning the race. And so that's just a small example and one example of how in the past, without technology, so many people's lives will be lost. And now in the present, we're able to save so many more lives through the power of AI. But in the future, that will be growing exponentially. And who knows, we might not even get sick in the first place. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. That was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.